it's a total disgrace. Absolutely shocking mess. I don't really know how it happens, but occasionally things get very complicated very quickly and I end up with a disaster area of a workshop. Now, I'm going to tell you one of these little chains of events and a solution. Hopefully that will solve just this one, but then hopefully that will cascade and end up with a very clear workshop ultimately. So you know I've got very uh, wide range of projects, some on the floor, some all over the bloody place, and this you're looking at is one of them. So this is a new drone, although it's a dead drone now. A new drone, um, I got my license, I started flying a drone, I started hooning around too much and I broke it. Uh, I broke the camera and the gimbal. So right, hard to replace, rip that off. Um, but that's okay, let's just jump in with some other solutions and that's like fine, we're going to make uh, get an FPV camera so I can use that with the controller so I can still see what this sees. So I need to print it. Turn on the printer, can't print because the Octoprint isn't working. And the Octoprint isn't working because I can't see it on the network. Why can't I see it on the network? Don't know, don't have a keyboard, mouse and monitor for this guy. Uh, that's fine, let's start yet another project. Another project being hook up a screen to it so you can have its IP address on it. All well and good, but you still don't have the keyboard and mouse and so on and so forth. It just escalates like that. I start one thing and then I end up with this big chain of disaster. Nothing gets done and just a horrible workshop with loads of millions of bloody unfinished projects. Now, I'm hoping that this item from T Smart and I don't think that's Tyco Electronics, that's a different TE, um, will help me out. And it will help me out on this and my numerous Raspberry Pi projects like the Robot Rover and all of those other things um, as well. And I'm just going to get out all the bits because it does come with rather nice selection of accessories. <laughs> that was just projected across the desk, by the way. Soldering iron stand, next thing to 3D print. It's all horrible. Anyway. Let's focus on one thing at a time. So this is the TE Smart KVM. It is this, look, DP KVM switch, four kilohertz, uh, sorry, 4K at 60 kilohertz. And that's what we want, isn't it? So we can use this on a 4K monitor. And my idea being that I've got a triple monitor set up and if I am smart and use something like this, I can dedicate one of those monitors to the uh, dual purpose on this KVM switch so I can use the as a Raspberry Pi hookup when I need to have a look at what the Raspberry Pi is doing. Because there's absolutely nothing worse than having to drag out a monitor, a keyboard, and um, a mouse, if you need one, to uh, do anything on the Raspberry Pi. And I have these all over the place and them endlessly failing, so endlessly needing a permanent hookup. So I am just looking here at this cable set here, and uh, I have a nasty <laughs> suspicion looking at this. This is DisplayPort. So that is, of course, the first issue I have to overcome. Admittedly, that was a bit of a mistake by me, of course, because a DisplayPort product won't connect directly to an HDMI product. However, I have been on the Amazon and just purchased these accessories likely to help. So what we have here are these adapters which have an HDMI input, so that should hook up to any leads I have already, and then have the display port that should go into the back of that KVM, so that's nice, and it actually came as a three pack. So I don't know if I need all three, I'm pretty sure I don't. And then I got this other lead, which is, oh, apart from being incredibly well packed, <laughs> and hermetically sealed for our protection. An HDMI on one side, a regular HDMI, and a DVI port on the other. So this is probably the wire, I'd say, that I'd use from the KVM to the Raspberry Pi, because the Raspberry Pi does have a standard HDMI on this one. And these will go to the various uh, interconnects, I think, to the monitors and stuff. We'll figure that out. Let's start again. So looking at the back, we do have a range of things. We have a USB 1, a USB 2, and then we have a USB, another USB 2.0, and a couple of USB slots. Now the idea between that, the idea of that is so that you can take one of these USB, I'm going to say Type B leads, I can never remember. I think, I always say that they look like an A, so I think call them an A, but I don't think they are. And USB 1, 
will go from the KVM to your computer. USB 2 will go from your KVM to your second computer or Raspberry Pi in uh, this case. And of course, then you can plug in your keyboard, your mouse, and I'm guessing a hub or a pen drive. It's only USB 2, so you're not going to be expecting massively high speeds, but it's designed for peripheral devices, maybe a joystick, maybe another keyboard, maybe something you share. Uh, what else you get in the kit is a remote control, which is kind of interesting <laughs> as well. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to remotely select between different channels on a KVM switch, but you can if you need to. Uh, normally you'd be sat right in front of this thing. Um, and I'm guessing once you hit select, it's going to switch between the two. It's quite interesting that it says online, so it will show you which devices are actually connected, which are giving input to this device. Then I believe these are the output selects. No problem. You've got a power supply, and that does come conveniently with an actual UK plug, which is quite honestly um, a relief. I mean, these days, you really, it's kind of hit and miss, even when you're getting things from the likes of Amazons and stuff that it might, may or may not have a, a UK plug. You kind of assume it if you're getting something from Alibaba that it's probably not going to. And let's just check out these interconnects. Where are we going to try this? Ah. Now, of course, I'm not going to use the display port leads in this case because I do have existing leads. But we'll just check that the adapter plugs in nicely. And indeed it does. And oh, this is a locking adapter. I do like locking things. Right, let's just hook it up. Now, of course, you didn't expect me to hook it up right away without having at least a quick look inside. I was thinking about this when I was walking around earlier that if there was enough room in this case, you could build your whole Raspberry Pi using one of those little teeny tiny Raspberry Pi boards inside and hook it up internally and have this as a desktop PC case for it. But that's switchable to like your regular normal PC. Because I always think a Raspberry Pi might be cool as a little permanent server if you don't want to leave your big PC on for little jobs. And this could just do it. In fact, wow, you've got loads of room in here. You've not only got loads of room, but you've got a nice metal enclosure that you can use as nice heat sinking. This is <laughs> a really good use for it. In fact, I'm tempted to just go a little bit further and see if we can just take out that main board and flip it over. Because if we can access the USB pins from the far side, you'll definitely be able to just hook it in with a little ribbon cable or the like. The screws are out. Just going to see if I can manhandle this. It has things on the front and things on the back, so I'm not quite sure how they did this, but I suspect it would have required a little bit of flexing of the case. And yeah, it looks like with that little bit of pressure, we can disengage those connectors and just swing them out of the way a little bit, just like that. And away she goes, and you can get straight in there. Instant access to all of the USB pins, easy. If you really want to just try that, you can. You can just build it in. And you probably have room inside here, plenty of room, to put a little USB hub as well. You could definitely get yourself a nice little setup. Just be sure to make sure you insulate your Raspberry Pi's electrical circuits um, from this. Uh, you definitely have opportunities here to use the existing screw holes to mount extra standoffs and things like that. But yeah, I think that's probably about all we're going to get out of this. Um, just having a quick look, if we're kind of slightly curious. We don't know much about these uh, technologies here, but you have a P13WVR31, whatever that is. I'm not really recognising any of these chips at all. Yep, they're all manufacturers I haven't seen before. And I guess it really doesn't matter, does it? You're not really going to be repairing one of these if it breaks. Just to show you how to put it back in. In fact, look, really nice metal um, inserts on that. That is absolutely nice. You can see they've really taken care because it's actually been painted after those metal inserts have been put in. This is a quality product. Very impressed. You can see it's back in the box. It's a bit of an unsatisfactory ending for me but probably not for this product. The reason being, I cannot, for love nor money, get this work with my equipment. And it's partially my fault, of course, not having DisplayPort um, monitors here. Um, but I'm very disappointed you can't seem to adapt between it properly. I have used this in my office, at my office computer, and that works fine. It works exactly how you'd expect it to work. Um, but that's a completely uh, DisplayPort setup. But if you want to use adapters, 
Um, if you've got any old DVI or anything like that in the chain, it's just not going to work for you. I, I would strongly suggest, yeah, don't bother trying. I mean, if you've got um, a setup where your monitors have both sets of input with DVI uh, and HDMI, I think you're probably going to be fine with that too. That's going to be okay. But if it's just um, DVI or HDMI only, you're going to be in trouble. So there you go. It's a bit of an unsatisfactory ending, but probably an okay product. Definitely quite a nice enclosure, but it's going to go back onto the shelf of embarrassed products for me. <laughs> um, but if you've got one, please let me know how you get on down below. And for me, I think I've got to start thinking about retiring those HDMI monitors. But what is your view on this? I mean, if you've got perfectly good working monitors, it seems wasteful to just swap them out just to upgrade the technology. I don't know. You tell me. As ever, thanks for watching.